Previously on The Bill. African people do not have a culture of violence. Criminals do. I still want us to have children, Phil. I think we should adopt. I'll take you out for a drink tonight. We'll talk about it. Dios de Costa. Soul. I just calmed him down a bit and gave him time to cool off and be able to deal with it. And he's a lot calmer now. Uh, nowhere near as angry as when he first turned up. But he's still refusing to open the door. Is your money your congregation? I've never seen him before. Uh, says he's here from Uganda. So what does he want with you, dear? Well, you'd better ask him. But um, go gently. I think he's a bit wary of the uniforms. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Kenneth, I think he said. Is he? I Kenneth, it's Pisciannis, Reg from Sun Hill, the pastor, the Bernard, he, he tells me you're refusing to open the door. Maybe you'd like to tell me what the problem is. Well, look at it this way. I mean, you're going to have to open the door eventually, aren't you? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. So, um, tell us what the problem is. I mean, maybe we can help. My business is with the pastor. I wish I can help you, but I can't. Help with what? Talk to them. I know someone else you could talk to. She will understand. She will help you. Ramani da Costa. It might be more informal. Oh, Phil, look. That is a designer twin stroller. We should really get down the retail part. They've got some amazing deals on designer kids' stuff. I know it's only early days, but the great thing about adoption is you've got ages to spread the cost. Right, this ain't working. I'm gonna have to call the garage. Give us that. People carry would be nice. Plenty of room in the boot. Just give it a rest, will ya? What's wrong with planning ahead? Well, you're talking about it like it's done and dusted. We haven't agreed that it's the right thing to do yet. I have thought about nothing else for weeks. Yeah, I know. If you're having doubts, why didn't you say something? I said from the beginning that I didn't want to rush into anything. We can't stall it much longer. It could take over a year as it is. Says who? Social services. Social services? I only made an inquiry. We're not committed to anything. You're too right we're not. Come on, why is it always down to me to get the ball rolling? Cindy, I can't talk about this right now, right? I've got to go to work because I've got things to do. Wait! Phil, what about the car? Buster, good to see you. Likewise. Thanks for spilling the time around. Oh, no problem. Oh, sorry, this is Mr. Ombanda. Thank you, I'll take it from you. Sorry. Mr. Obonio, I understand you're here from Uganda. How can we help? I, I can't pay you anything. I borrowed all the money I could to come here. Her name is Esther. She's my daughter. When did you see Esther last? Two months ago. But we had to get her away from Kitcom District. The Resistance Army still operates in the area. They abduct local children, put a gun in their hands, and make them fight. Girls are forced to go with much older officers. She's a young girl. She deserves to grow up safely. I only wanted to give her a better life than she would have had at home with us. It's not unusual for some girls to travel abroad, live with distant relatives or wealthier families. You can understand why it seems better than the alternative. Of course, yeah. So. Did Esther come to live with relatives? Not exactly. A government official used to shop in our store. He told us he knew someone who placed girls like Esther with good Ugandan families in England. He said she'll be well cared for and that she'd receive a good British education. What was this man's name? We just knew him as Sammy. He supplied all the contact details for the family. 
I rang them, spoke to them several times to make sure they were good people and that they would look after my Esther. The line's dead now. I spent all night trying to find the address, but it doesn't exist. How did Esther get to the UK? With an escort, she suffers from asthma. My wife wanted to travel with her, but Sammy said it would cost too much red tape. He provided all the documents. Mr. Bonyu, did Esther actually travel on her own passport? How much did this man charge you? Three million shillings. It's about a thousand pounds. Look, I know this is probably very hard to accept, but there is a chance that Esther might not even be in Canley. Well, Esther sent them a prayer card from my church last week. I mean, there's no Esther in our congregation. Well, I mean, it's a possibility that somebody wrote this on her behalf to make it look like she was here. No! This is Esther's handwriting. She must have been at the church or know someone who was. She must be here. Do you think you can help? Yeah, the intruder must have gotten through that kitchen window. There's no sign of a break-in. Did Mrs. Bailey see anything? No, she hadn't come in, so she stayed in the bedroom and kept quiet. I did not realise that she was in. Yeah. Do we know what was taken? Some money and jewellery. Does she live here on her own? Yeah. He can't have been that stupid. What? What is it? An appointment for three o'clock yesterday with Raymond Lane. Was he a probation officer? Yeah. And that's the address of a bail hostel. That's handy. You got nothing better to do? I asked the DI if I could assist on the Pat Gannon hunt. I got to hold the fort here. It's lucky me. Delightful. It's all indeed of you house train by now. Why are you being sent passenger list from Entebbe Airport? Oh, I'm just trying to trace this missing ten-year-old from Uganda. She was meant to be on that flight. Well, there's several minors on this list. What's her name? Esther Bonya. She's travelling on a false passport. Under what name? Well, she didn't get her passport till she got to the airport, so her parents didn't see what it said. The port safeguarding team. That's what they're for. No, no, no. I want to have a go at finding her, because I promised Pastor Bernard I can't let him down. Thank you. Yeah, all right. How much is the jewellery worth? A couple of hundred quid. Is that all? Well, that's a lot to Mrs Bailey. What else was in the wallet? Um, there was a lottery ticket and £5.60 in cash. Well, let's hope he gets lucky on the lottery. That should bring him out of the woodwork. Any ID? No, just the appointment card. We spoke to Raymond Lang, who's a probation officer. Apparently, Matty Bell had an appointment with him at 3 p.m. yesterday. So, right, what's his form? Well, burglary targets pensioners. And he goes back a long way. I first arrested him years ago. Strange he should leave a calling card, don't you think? Well, he's been banged up for three years. Maybe he's out of practice. They're never out of practice. Thank you. Thank you. OK, Sarge, let's see what this Matty has to say for himself, shall we? Listen, you can have it. Take care of yourself, can not you? All right, I'll remember that. All right. How's mm -hmm. it going? It's not really. Kenneth mentioned that Esther has asthma, so I thought it might be worth checking all the local A&E departments to see whether a temporary resident had been treated matching Esther's description. And I've got uniform looking, and so far it's all just dead ends. The very people. All right, news from Hawks in general. A Harriet Mabrilo and a Sarah Casule both being treated as temporary visitors in the last couple of months. For what? Uh, Harriet for minor lacerations, Sarah for breathing difficulties. She was discharged with an inhaler. You know, I'll double check the list, but I'm pretty sure there was a Sarah Casule on the flight from Entebbe. If that's the case, then she's our one. What's the address? Uh, 58 Renfrew Way. Police, open the door! Money. What's going on? What's the matter? Not enough action for you. We've seen and done this a million times before. 
Now, I bet you Matty Bell comes round that corner, he'll see us, he legs it, and then he squirrels his innocence. That's him. Go on then, Tiger. <laughs> you don't know you're jumping to conclusions. You don't think so? A young girl matching Esther's description was treated at Hoxton General. The woman with her gave a false address, your address. Do you think you know anybody who might do that? Well, I, I can see it's a little odd. And I want to help. I don't appreciate you casting suspicion on my congregation when you don't have a scrap of evidence. Look, Esther sent home a prayer card from your church. And now, our investigation has led us to your door. Now, do you not think there might be some connection? But you don't seriously think that I am involved Buster, in Master, a little girl is missing. All I am trying to do is find her. Now, if your congregation object to that, I am very sorry, but that's not going to stop my investigation. <coughs> Lisey Perkins has just entered the room. I think gone. It's a pretty good likeness of Esther, wouldn't you say? Yes, it is, yeah. Now, the staff at the hospital will remember them because this woman apparently got really stroppy when they asked her for her address. CCTV at Hoxton General. You recognise this woman? Rachel Matembe. <sighs> if you need any more information from me, anything at all, Please, just ask. Oops. Hey, Dan. This is harassment. I've hardly been out of the hostel all week. You just spent three years in Shadwell for breaking into sheltered housing and stealing cash, antiques and jewellery from a pensioner. So what? So cash and jewellery were stolen from an elderly lady this morning. So you can see how we made the connection. So where were you between seven and eight this morning? In bed. And before you ask, I was on my own. Well, there's no surprise there. <laughs> Come on. You can't pin this on me just because I've got form. You're awfully confident, aren't you, Matty? I'm innocent. I know that make a nice change. Yeah, it does, actually. Where'd you find it? Getting careless in your old age. What was it? One last job for the road? All right. I did the place. It was too easy. Couldn't help myself. So how did you get into the property? Through the window, like always. And where did you find the gear? A drawer in the bedroom, I think. It was in the lounge? Yeah, well, I went from room to room. I don't remember details. The old woman was in the bedroom, scared out of her wits. Surely you would have remembered that. Must have missed the bedroom. So what exactly did you take? You already know. Jewellery and cash. How much cash? Can't remember. Spent it all now. Oh, and what? F food, clothes, whatever. Describe the jewellery. Old girl stuff, I don't know. Where did you sell it? Look, I've confessed. Isn't that enough? If Matt did that flat, he did it blindfolded. He's confessed, so you can go back to cleaning your nails. Look, I was saying at the start of that interview, he sounded genuine. Well, maybe it's just trying to wind you up. It take much. Listen, there's more to it than that. Do you know, our intros are full to overflowing and you're hell-bent on unsolving a crime. Hey, you two, we've searched Matty's bedroom. No sign of the gear. No, he's sold it on, apparently. All right, so what happened to the proceeds? When we booked him in, he was skint. We asked if we could return the jewellery to Mrs Bailey. Apparently, they're family heirlooms. Well, he's not going to grasp up his fence, but we'll see what we can do. All right, so why did he fold so easily? Sarge, he left his wallet at the scene. It could have been a set-up. It's a wider confession. Well, I don't know. Yet. But he's only been out a week. You get on the shed, well, Nick, find out who's been visiting him lately. Come on. Sarge. Thanks for your help. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. So, what about the port safe guarantee? 
Well, it wouldn't hurt to use their expertise when we bring Rachel Matembe in. I'll just give them a call, okay? All right, I'll keep looking into her back. Thanks, Tom. So, how are you? Hello. Hi. What are you doing here? Oh, I was just checking on the kid around the corner. Nine years old and already been nicked three times. Got to see if you have time for some lunch. Oh, I'm sorry, Sol. I'm completely snowed under. I can't. That's a shame. I've got the photos back from Mark's wedding. I'll come in. Half an hour wouldn't hurt, would it? That wouldn't be fair to you, would it? Hey, well, how about a drink after work, then? I could pick you up. Lovely. About seven o'clock? Yeah. OK. I'll see you then. See you, Auntie. Look at him, poor bloke. What he wanted was a sandwich. Right, Matty only had two visitors in the last month of his sentence. One of them was his probation officer. Right, hang on. Who's the other? A Scott Gibbs. Gibbs. Well, Matty's regular fence was a Colin Gibbs. Oh, hang on, he hasn't been convicted since March 1990, though. What about Scott? Oh, your asses. Clean. Right, check Matty's mobile directory, see if either Scott or Colin's listed. Do you know, I don't know who put what on your porridge this morning, but this whole Sergeant Major impression's getting a little bit annoying. You keep your tights on, all right? I'll do it myself. Yeah, there's a Scott listed. Pass me that phone, please. And Matty called him yesterday. Colin's kid. Leave a message and I'll call you straight back. Well, why would he visit Matty in jail? Maybe Colin wants Matty back in business. Using Scott as a go-between. Maybe. All right, you uh, want to check this out or what? My dad's not in. It's all right. He'll be ages yet. Don't worry, Scott. We just want a quick chat. Do you know Matty Bell? Sorry, Scott. Has someone died? My mum. I'm sorry to hear that. You don't need to do that, mate. No, the place is a mess. I've been meaning to sort it out. Must be hard keeping on top of things, is it? Did you say that you knew Matty? My dad wouldn't want you here asking me stuff like this, all right? Yeah, perhaps we'll do this another time, eh, Sarge? So we know you visited him in Shadwell. Scott! Scotty! Oh, please go, yeah? You don't like people being here. I'm D.S. Hunt, this is D.C. Masters, Sun Hill. What's happened to your mum's cards? <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Listen, I need to speak to you both about Matty Bell. When was the last time you saw him? Years ago. Don't worry, we'll come back another time. Listen, you used to fence for him, though, didn't you? Look, he's not my favourite topic of conversation, all right? All right, what's the problem? OK, Mr Gibbs, we're off now. Thanks for your time, yeah? Right, what would you stop me for? They're in no fit state to be questioned. Even if Colin did have anything useful to tell us, he's not under caution. And we won't be able to stop questioning him till it's opened up anyway. Yeah, well, I'll just have to get a warrant to search his flat, then. On what grounds? Matty hasn't got the gear and Colin used to fence for him. Sixteen years ago. What, don't you want to crack this? Not with a sledgehammer, no, I don't. Well, what's that supposed to mean? It means that I'm paid to put up with the whole macho thing, but the public, they tend to object. All right. I'm sorry. Pardon? I said I'm sorry. Cindy's been on a one-woman mission to mess with my head. Oh. Well, let's get this warrant sorted out, shall we? Mm -hmm. Hello. Remini, Terry. This is DCI Richard Caddick of the Port Safeguarding side of the Child Abuse Investigation Team. Sir, thank you very much for helping us with this. Oh, it seems like you've been managing quite fine without us. Your, uh, your superintendent tells me that your uh, relationship with the local pastor has come in quite handy. That's right. Uh, we met him on another case. Uh, it looked like a young girl had been abused during an exorcism. It turns out that she was being bullied at school. Anyway, Pastor Bernard didn't like the way we uh, initially handled the case. However, Romani won him round, so there we are. Sounds like it, if he's coming back to you for help. 
some communities are so close knit that it's difficult to get a foot in the door. So, uh, so if you can use him to find a way in, you're halfway there. Well, I, I, I don't think I was using him, but he certainly proved very helpful. Um, and if it wasn't for him, Esther's father wouldn't have spoken to us. He did say something, which was that it's quite usual for Ugandan children to be sent to live in other households. Hmm. It's not uncommon in parts of Africa. Some kids are sent to live with relatives, others work for wealthier households. Now we might call that exploitation, but in another culture they might say it's the only way a kid will eat. Who are we to judge? No, 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 I, I wasn't judging, it's just um, it's clearly against the law. I'm not arguing with you. Anyway, sir, uh, the good news is that we have identified the woman with Esther as being Rachel... Um, Mutembe. Mutembe. Uh, she's cleaned her previous records, she's our next port call. Very good. If you get the chance, follow her, it'll be good to see who she might lead us to. Right. What about Esther? Well, it depends on whether or not she's been placed yet, or if she's still in a holding house, but uh, in either case, chances are she's been moved on already. This uh, Rachel? Yeah. That's a very good lead. Stick with it. Thank you. And this is a full fat chocolate muffin. Aww. What did you think we were going to do? Bulldoze in here, all guns blazing? <gasps> that DCI caddy? Mm. I mean, have I not worked in this job long enough to know that you have to have a good relationship with the community? Maybe he was just trying to give you the benefit of his experience. Oh, well, I appreciate that, Terry, but I mean, credit me with the experience working in CSU to know when to tread lightly. Son of Rachel. I saw somebody on in the top room there, but just a glimpse. Mm -mm. That's not Rachel. Looks like Rachel to me. No, on the top floor. Somebody else. What do you want? I'm with police officers. You don't want answering a few questions, do you? Do you have any children, Mrs. Mutembe? This is my house. What do you think you're doing? What's in the room up there? I don't know. What are you talking about? It's your house, isn't it? The landlord keeps this room locked. I assume he keeps furniture and things like that in there. Aha, so the door's locked and I imagine you don't have a key. Over there, please. Stand back! How did Esther Abornio come to be in your house? Rachel, please don't waste our time. We found her in your upstairs room. I've been good to Sarah. Her name is Esther. She'll live a far better life here in England than in some slum in Kiku. Here she has a warm place to sleep, food to eat, and a doctor when she's ill. You kept a ten-year-old girl locked up in a room. You made her work for you unpaid. Now tell me, how is that better than being with a loving family? You know what it's like for a child in Kidkum, do you? Maybe not. But I do know that stealing children from their families is against the law. I did not steal her. Her parents sent me a noisy, willful child with no sense of discipline. She now has values to last her for life. <laughs> values? Miss Matembe, how much were you paid to take Esther in? Board and keep, that's all. Who paid you? Okay. How long were you planning to keep her? Until a suitable family was found. And who would find that family? What are we going to find when we search your house, Mrs Matembe? Evidence of other children that you've helped traffic? And what if we looked into flights to and from Uganda, would we discover that you've been flying back and forth with other minors? And what about the benefits? Were you claiming benefits for these children? So you can sit there silently for as long as you like. Because once we've turned your house upside down, I think we'll have all the evidence that we need. We're looking for items of stolen jewellery, Mr Gibbs. If they're here, it will be a lot easier if you tell us now. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I promised Tina I'd go straight, and I have. I've kept my promise. 
Well then, you've got nothing to worry about, have you? Yeah, I'm sorry about it earlier. I had had a few. But whatever Matt has done, honestly, it's got no to do with me. Look around you, mate. From still fencing, won't I have better than this? Think of poor Scott, eh? Only buried his mum a week ago. You're wasting your time. Yeah. Where'd you find them? Under the wardrobe in the boys' room. Got something to say for yourself, Colin? I were offered the gear. I couldn't resist. I know, I know. It's a filthy habit. Are you on your way to the hospital? Yes, sir. I've spoken to Esther's doctors and they tell me that she's well enough to talk to us, so they're just going to go and pick her up. That's a good idea. The last thing she needs is to be hauled into the station by some faceless uniform. I contacted Kenneth and he's going to meet us there. And hopefully when Esther sees that her father accepts me, it'll help her to open up. But this is all assuming that you still want me in on the interview. Absolutely. Just let me know when you're back, we'll crack on. Oh, uh, Gov. I know you wanted to see whether Rachel might lead us to somebody, but Esther's safety had to come first. I absolutely agree. No one's saying otherwise. Earlier you said you hadn't been in trouble for years. Been a mess since Tina died. Can't cut it without her. What do you normally do for a living, Colin? Painting and decorating. Lost a lot of work when Tina got ill, though. Looked after her, did you? Wanted to be at home with me and Scott. Right, run us through how you got hold of this jewellery. I've been drinking most at night. I know I should get myself together, but I can't sleep. No, we are to hear. Who made contact first? Hey. It means who arranged the job? I did. Do you send Scott to visit Matty in Shadwell? No, he's got no to do with it. What was he doing there then? Look, I ran into Matty in a pub. He offered me gear, I took it. Just like the good old days. But you just said that you arranged the job. Oh, you're confusing me here. Uh, he offered me gear at a price I couldn't refuse. End of. We've got scene examiners checking the lady's house. We'll get prints soon enough. Colin, are you sure you were involved in this? I'm sure. Cheers. Two confessions, eh? Wish every day was such a breeze. Yeah, I knew they were both lying through their teeth. Well, Colin's obviously covering for Scott, but why would Matty bother, though? And why did Scott only visit him once, a week before his release? Or perhaps he wanted to see him in his natural habitat. He'll be back there soon enough if he didn't change his story. I'm nearly there, Esther. Is that the room with children? Do you mind if I... can I? Thank you. Oh, I used to love this book when I was your age. Thank you. Who was your favourite character? I wanted to be Bobby. Did you bring this with you when you came from home? It must have been a surprise when you came to England, because it's nothing like in the book, is it? Listen, love, it's all right. I'm not going to hurt you. I can't imagine what you've been through, but you are going to be safe. All right? Please. I want to go home. Why would she do that to her? What has she said? You've seen her. Why did she keep my Esther locked up? For money? I would have given her money. I would have paid whatever. Let me see. This is all my fault. All I ever wanted was for her to be safe. Now listen to me. None of this is your fault. You did what you thought was right. The important thing is, we found her. Right now, what she needs is for her dad to be strong. Okay, let's go see her. Come on. You stand. Esther! Dad! Oh. Oh. 
I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. How are you? Interview resumed at 15.30 hours. We've been chatting with your old mucker. Colin Gibbs. And cinnamon years. Really? Because we found that stuff you said you nicked in his gaff. How did it get in there? It's not rocket science, is it? We know that Scott visited you at Shabwell. Now, why was that? His mum's just died. He wanted to hear about when she was young. Stuff like that. Why would he be asking you? I've known Tina and Colin since we were kids. So why didn't he wait till you got out? Don't know. Maybe he was just curious to see the inside of a nick. Uncle Matt's a bit of a rebel, is he? See, Scott's been having a bit of a hard time lately. Your life on the edge might seem a bit more exciting. <coughs> Take advantage of that, did you? In what way? Well, you got a soft spot for Scott. You've got a sick mind. You fancy the idea of working side by side with him as partners? Shut up. So how'd you get that stuff in his bedroom? Pretend you wanted to play with his action man. Are you gonna charge me? Or what? Because I've had enough of this. The, uh, the scene examiner is finished at Mrs. Bailey's flat. There's no sign of any prints anyway. Right, so whoever did it knew what they were doing? Well, apart from dropping the wallet, yeah. Yeah, Matty said that Scott went to visit him in Shadwell. Said that he was there to speak to him about his mum. Well, yeah, well, could be. They were an item just before she got together with Colin. And how long ago was that? I don't know. I mean, I've nicked him loads of times. It doesn't mean to sign over the ins and outs of his love life. Oh, right, do us a favour. Bring Scott in. Yeah. Scott? Wait! Fire! Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Come on, what are you running for? It's nice to be frightened of. Dear Santa just wants a word with you, that's all. What for? Well, didn't you know? Your dad's been nicked. Do you think you'd be up to answering a few questions? We want these people caught. Yeah? Great. How long had you been at the house? Since arriving in England. Could you give me some idea of what a day was like for you? Morning laundry, back to my room, afternoon cleaning, start at the top of the house, work my way down, back to my room. So grins, prepare dinner, do dishes, then bed. Every day? Miss Matembe said I had a lot to learn. How often would you leave the house? Only today. Did you never go to church or to school? Miss Matembe said I couldn't because my father did not pay enough. She was lying. I paid everything that was asked of me. You know that prayer card that you sent home? Where did you get that from? Miss Matembe made me send it. So my parents would think I was alright. The way it was written, we knew something was wrong. That's why I came. How long did Miss Matembe say that you were going to stay in the house? Until I could live with a proper family and go to school. Did you meet any other families? Did anybody come to the house? Sometimes. And did you get a chance to speak to them? Only to a girl who stayed in my room once. Well, where is she now, Esther? She wouldn't stop crying. So she got taken away. I was scared. Miss Matembe said, if I was bad, I would get taken away too. Who took the girl away? Miss Matembe's friend. What was the friend called? It's okay. Mr. Nadaga. Go. Does the name Julius Nadaga mean anything to you? Yeah. Big fish and drugs, guns, anything you can make a buck in, really. Any history on child trafficking? No, nothing we've been able to pin on him as yet, but he is based in Kampala. He doesn't spend much time here. Not anymore. According to Esther, he visits Rachel Matembe regularly. Well, getting a name is the easy part. We're just going to catch him now. Mm. You've been out being a playboy again, Tom. In my dreams. <laughs> Any joy? Ah, uh, not a lot. Why you look at all this stuff? It goes back years. We're not specifically sure what we're looking for. Well, I just spoke to Romani. Anything to do with Julius Nadaga is really important. Well, the words needle and haystacks bring to mind. Well, while Rachel Matembe's keeping her mouth shut, we don't have an awful lot of options, do we? So sorry about that. Oh, 
Thanks for coming in, Scott. Well, I'm afraid that your dad's got himself into a little bit of trouble. Do you know about his criminal record? Yeah, but he was a kid then. Yeah, well, he's been under a lot of stress lately. Perhaps it's pushed him over the edge. No way. Listen, mate, you don't have to face it. Dad's made a full confession. He didn't do it. He didn't do what? I haven't said what he's in for yet. Listen, he's been drinking all the hours. Handling stolen goods. I mean, he's been keeping them in your wardrobe. What kind of dad does a thing like that? He didn't. Matty did. He nicked the stuff and gave it to me. For me to sell on. And why would he do that, Scott? He thought we needed the cash. So Matty risks another long stretch in prison. Just to make sure you're all right for a few quid. Is that right? Well, Matty sounds like a pretty nice bloke to me. Oh, just let my dad go, yeah? Passport, Sarah Casula. Yes, one of the microwaves, uh, notebook. I'll list the contacts. What's the laptop? Right. In here. I'll type in the web address global-mail.org. Okay, now the email address is rachelm at global-mail.org. Password is a poker. Sorry? Poker. A P O K A. Scroll down. Genius. Gotcha. Okay, Scott, I've arrested you for handling stolen goods and I've cautioned you. Now, are you sure you understand what that means? Yeah. So whose idea was it to burgle a flat? Matty's. I met up with him yesterday and he talked me into it. And Colin had no idea about this plan? They don't get on. But Matty was very fond of your mum, wasn't he? Isn't it a fact that they used to be together? I don't think so. How long ago was that? What, 16, 17 years ago? That's just before you were born, I think. What's he been saying? You don't seem to like Matty very much. So? So you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. He's your father, isn't he? I found out after Mum's funeral. After he'd had a few drinks. And why didn't Colin tell you earlier? He said that he didn't want things making difficult for Mum. It's not like it makes a difference anyway. Colin's still my dad. So why go out your way for Matty? And why go ahead with the burglary? When Dad told me that Matty was being released, I thought I'd go talk to him first. Tell him that I didn't want him hanging around. How it had just upset Dad. But he was having none of it. Wanted us to get together for a pizza or something. Well, what's bad about that? I don't even like him. Is that why you set him up? See, Matty wasn't involved with this at all, was he? He's confessed, hasn't he? Well, we've got his wallet and we're examining it for fingerprints. We can run a check on yours too. You just wanted him out of the way. Back inside. Didn't you? So you burgled that flat and you left the wallet there. Come on, Scott, give it up now. You're going to feel a whole lot better when you do, mate. Go on, you're free to go. I ain't even been charged yet. Scott's admitted setting you up. How is he? Well, Colin's given him an earful. He's taking him on. Come on. He came to see me yesterday. He must have nicked the wallet then. So, would you have really gone back to prison for him? I've got my reasons. Well, now you're a family man. When Scott asked to see me, I knew he'd found out. I wanted to make some of it, you know? I felt bad for Colin, but it wasn't like I was trying to replace him. I just thought with Tina gone, then he could do with having someone else around. 
Or didn't you think to tell him a few years ago? Tina chose Colin over me. They were off playing happy families while I skipped in and out of jail. I think she made the right choice, don't you? He's a good lad. A proper little operator. Takes after me. Do us a favour, yeah? It's a new lot. I've wasted enough of my time already. Tell Scott to get in touch. Whenever he's up for it. Please? Why, what have you done now? No, look, I'm the injured party here. Oh, yeah, right. No, I promise you. Listen, Cindy's doing my editing. She's banging on about adopting kids now. So you're getting her roses instead? What, you wrote a book on men and women, did you? Quite a few chapters on women, yeah. <laughs> Go on, enlighten me. Be honest with her. Don't buy her off with flowers, just tell her what you want. Or rather, what you don't want. That simple. That simple. Nice one. Two dozen. Excuse me, sir. The mobile company have identified our man as Julius Newcalf. Also known to us as Julius Nadaga. Is he living on our patch? Phone's registered to 55 Hoxton Road. Very nice. No doubt you want to take it from here, Richard? That's okay with you. Oh, absolutely, sir. Great. I wouldn't want to step on your toes. You've done a great job so far. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers, Gov. Okay, so you can stop now. No, I just want to sort out this paperwork for the DCI. Everybody's gone to the telly arms. Do you fancy a drink? Haven't you forgotten something? Well, no, you got the coffee, so I get the beers. I thought you were meant to be meeting Saul tonight. You have forgotten. Come on, I'll help you. How am I going to get out of this? Tell me. Are you sure you want to? Well, it was meant to be a casual thing, Terry. I, I don't well, can't believe it at that. I mean, he's not a bad bloke, is he? For a social worker. Do you think I'm being unfair on him? You're asking me advice about relationships now? Well, I think it was a very good idea you splitting up with Lucy. I did it because you told me to. No, I didn't. I just said the longer you leave it, the harder it's going to become. Well, there you go, then. <clears throat> What are you sitting in the dark for? Yeah. A bit of charm and that's the cracks covered. Listen, I called four shops to get these for you. Put them in water. I'm not predictable, am I? You're not late for dinner, Phil. You're screwing up my chances of having a family. Since we were 18, you've promised me one thing and done something else. Like what? Fidelity, for starters. Cindy, I'd never cheat on you now. I know what I'd lose. We're good together. And when we're both ready, we'll make great parents. If you really wanted kids, you'd show a bit of attention to the ones you've already got. It's not my fault that Christine and Kate left. No, you're completely blameless, aren't you? Well, if I'm such bad news, why'd you keep having me back? Do you know what I've been doing all day? While well, you've been burying your head in the sand at work. I've been thinking. Trying to work out why you and I are still together. We're still together because we love each other. Really? Cindy, I'd do anything to make you happy. And if kids mean that much to you, then... All right, let's just get on with it. I want you to want to have kids with me, Phil. Not do it just to shut me up. I don't mean it like that. Cindy, can we just put kids and adoption to one side for a minute? Me and you, it's about us, isn't it? We're a habit. And neither one of us has got the guts to break. Cindy, I love you. You're with me because I look after you. I put you back together when you mess up. I'm with you because I don't believe I can do any better. I'm trying to cling on to a time when I couldn't imagine life without you. And now I can. Don't say that. No. I'm not losing you, Cindy. You are.
right. <laughs> Not really. Wanna go for a drink? No, I just want to go home, Terry. I'm sorry. On the bill. That DC Naddy is not right in his head. I want to report my dad for sexually abusing me when I was younger. I didn't do anything! Come on, sir, let's go. I've got a million to one chance of getting bailed this afternoon. I'm sorry, but from where I'm sitting, things ain't looking too good.